For Iraqi businessman Namir al Akabi and his workers, this is jihad. A sacred struggle to rebuild their country despite the threats and violence. All we are trying to do is rebuild Iraq. You know, this is a water treatment plant. These are clinics. Uh, these are barracks for our Iraqi, new Iraqi army soldiers. You know, when we do such a thing, uh, this is jihad for us. This is the Iraqi, the real jihad for us, you know, to rebuild our company. Jihad, uh, they have it wrong upside down. You know, jihad is not to kill innocent people. Jihad is not to kill an engineer who works on a project that is financed by so and so. You know, jihad is, in my opinion, jihad is hard work in the sun, uh, 10, 12 hours a day, okay, and sweating and then coming up with a result, with something that would benefit Iraq. Namir and his company Amco are an Iraqi success story. Raised in Kuwait and living in London, he returned two weeks after Baghdad fell. He started with a staff of five and a $500 contract to deliver fuel. Now his company has 2,000 Iraqis on the payroll and hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts. This project is funded by the U.S. government. It will bring clean water to the two million people of Sutter City. Unlike many projects awarded to foreign companies, every single worker here, from the engineers to the laborers, is Iraqi. It spreads the wealth around. This is a $28 million water treatment plant, and we are doing it from A to Z with 100% Iraqi engineer designers. We go back to the prime contractor and, and we submit our, everything we submit for, and they approve it. And sometimes we do make mistakes, but they teach us. In one day, we, we, we learn the new thing in the design, and we, that will teach us for life. You know? Namir, a Shia Muslim whose wife is a Sunni Kurd, says he doesn't know what religion most of his engineers are. As for the laborers, he makes a point of hiring them from the surrounding communities. They seem proud to be working here. It's an honor for us to work for Sada City. It's a great honor. We want to work day and night for the sake of this city. They're paid better than average wages. Unskilled laborers get about $10 a day, skilled ones up to 40. They all have safety equipment, hard hats, and proper shoes. The opportunities here have changed Demir's life and that of his workers. The foreman sees his job as a religious duty. Real jihad is working for your country, working with us. It's not carrying a gun and killing a doctor or a contractor or an engineer or a manager in the name of jihad. This is not jihad. This is very far from Islam. Success hasn't come without a cost. Four of Namir's employees, one of them a relative, were killed in an ambush by 20 gunmen on the road from Taji, north of Baghdad, last year. We were not armed, so I actually could hear them going back on single shots, and then Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's like they, they did something so, so brave, and in my opinion, this is the lowest of the cowards. You know, when you kill an unarmed, injured man. You cannot get any lower than this. Afterwards, he held a meeting with all his employees to see if they wanted to keep working. They did. I could have backed my bags and left the country. I'm, I'm okay. I could work in other countries. I made a little money. I could live well in other countries. But that's what the terrorists want. If people like me leave Iraq, then they won. This is part of them winning. This is part of them winning. And this I will, I will not allow anyway. It's a tough business for Iraqis who have been cut off from the world for nearly 20 years. Namir says he got his big break from the U.S. Air Force Center for Environmental Excellence, which makes a point of hiring Iraqi contractors. But he says a lot of other contracts are still awarded based on how well companies can present proposals in English, rather than how well they can execute them. A lot of other contracts still go to foreign companies. Namir says they skim off 30 or 40 percent and then subcontract to the cheapest Iraqi firm. And then there's corruption. This is one of the biggest diseases in Iraq, you know. You know, for Iraq to stand on its feet, we have to, we will never finish corruption 100 percent, even within the Iraqi ministries and so on. 
uh, but we, t we have to reduce it. You know, this is one of the reasons why we are failing security-wise. He says it's hard to know the right thing to do. They could make a small problem into a huge problem. Uh, and then, as a businessman, you, you, you evaluate what should you do. Should you be stubborn and ethically right, or should you bend the rule a little bit? And that's a hard choice. Namir says it's not about money anymore. He's made enough. His wife and young sons keep asking him when he's going to leave Iraq to rejoin them. His dream, he says, is to bring them here, to be able to work and see his family every day, and to rebuild Iraq. You know, anybody asked me a year ago, I would have told them in one year, Iraq would be 100% safe. There would be a lot of investment coming to Iraq, and Iraq would be booming. I was very wrong. You ask me the same question now, my answer is, I don't know, but I'm ho very hopeful. I don't know when it will be safe enough. But we have to, you see, we have to not to lose sight of the road we are taking. You know, we have, to, we have to keep on going on that road, the road of rebuilding Iraq and freedom and democracy. And it will be another great success. Jane Araf, CNN, Baghdad. Please will vote for? I honestly hope so.